That's right. Last time I was playing with the free people, uh, just as I was ending the stream, a, uh, a siege started. So that's what we'll be working on right now, is uh, keeping zombies from getting inside our lovely baseball field. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have to put much work into that, though, because we've got so many watchtower positions. <laughs> and everybody's just hanging out up there, just waiting for zombies to show up. So we'll just chill here for a couple of minutes. Let the people with infinite bullets do the shooting. It's weird how, you know, Whitney Field... So we, we changed the AI on these characters to make, it, to make them better at shooting zombies. I think we might have overdone it, though, because now they can see zombies I can't see. They're shooting zombies that are really, really far away, some of which are so far away that they're not very good at hitting them. Uh, at that distance. So you end up just hearing a lot of gunshots at uh, watchtower heavy bases like this. But, I mean, they are pretty good at keeping the zombies out. The fight uh, fight's pretty much over as far as I'm concerned. Hmm... All right, so uh, Crimson Exodia asks, did you have any input on what randomly generated community names we have in State of Decay 2? Uh, yeah, that was actually... Um, I don't think I wrote all of them. I think our, our lead writer also contributed some of them, uh, but I wrote a lot of them. Um, and also, I uh, I sort of uh, made the rules. Oh, okay. Juggernaut. Cool. Come here, buddy. But yeah, I also helped uh, sort of make the rules about uh, when you're allowed to get different names because we've got a lot of really weird names but we don't let you have those weird names when you're new to the game. We wait until you've been playing a while before we're like thinking you, you, you might want to be the pink unicorns or something like that. Oh, you kill stealers. They shot him in the head while I was still... Uh, Still riding on his back. Oh, he's in the way. I can't get through the door. Oh, come here. There we go. Well, now I feel like I contributed. I feel like a useful member of the community. All right, let's uh, replenish our shotgun shells. And now let's look at our goals. Okay, so I'm upgrading the lounge because uh, I want to max out my ability to raise morale in this community. We've got a workshop that I had to repair because I ran my community completely out of materials. So we're repairing that workshop. The command center. Ooh, okay, I can do a satellite broadcast. Or, ooh, drone hacking. Yes. The main thing I want to do is improve a computer skill. So I think, was it Thom? Thom, Thom, Thom. Okay, he's a computers guy. I don't remember. It may be after the action is over that he would gain a star in computers, but once he does, he's going to gain electronics. And he's already got munitions. And I'm going to be able to make C4. So that's going to be awesome. In the meantime, we should find something else to do. Uh, the, re I'm, the reason I'm going after uh, Plague Hearts with explosives is because I've got a bounty. You can see that at the top of the screen that says to. And actually, I think that's one of the bounties that's sort of the victim of one of our uh, uh, bugs with Update 24, where it appeared to reset people's bounty progress um, on a lot of the bounties that already completed. We actually, I believe that we actually have continued to track their their bounty progress. I think that we're going to be able to fix that. But for now, it actually, what it does is it gives me another opportunity to go after a bounty that I, that I had already completed. So uh, I'm not really going to complain about that, actually. Oh, uh, the tank suggests uh, that we should get, uh, that that when the community kills a freak, we should get influence for it. I agree. That's actually, that's on a list of, uh, of small uh, little fi fixes and tweaks that we want to make. So thanks for bringing that up. But yeah, th that absolutely is on our list of things we want to do. Oh, there's a survey card. Now, are there any, there aren't really any places I need to survey. Maybe up here in this area. I'm just trying to think if I want to any, have any additional vehicles. Like, I like that Ranger SUV, for instance. It's good to have backup vehicles sometimes. So maybe what I'll do is I'll head out 
to grab this vehicle, and maybe if I'm feeling ambitious, I'll try to do something to that play card, because I've still got a bunch more play cards. I don't need to use this one necessarily for the uh, for the bounty. We could really use some help for you folks. Oh yeah, the gutting knives? Think that we're going to come up and help them? They're called the gutting knives. I, I don't know. Maybe pick a better name, everybody. Do I have everything I need? Yeah, probably. I'm fine. Uh, actually, no. I, sh I should grab some fire. Fire! All right. Oh, and I should drop off these plague samples, because I do not need to carry those around. Of course, if I'm going after a plague heart... Oh, wait. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm going after a car that has no gas and needs to be repaired. So, boom and boom as well. Two booms. All right. Now we're ready to go. What's this character's name again? Christy. That's right. Okay, Christy. Christy really wants to prove herself. So she's going out on her own. Grab a car for the community. So uh, Adam Beltran is uh, is suggesting that we. Uh, it sounds like you're suggesting that we offer more, more options for customizing uh, like graphic settings. That uh, you're looking for maybe if we could go lower resolution and higher frame rate, that, that might be fun. Um, that's so. Because I'm not a technical guy, usually I don't weigh in that much in con conversations about that. Um, just because, like. I don't always understand like all of the ramifications. As I understand it, our frame rate is actually not entirely um, limited by uh, by the by graphical uh, concerns. That actually that that CPU is as much an issue for us uh, with with graphics as as uh, GPU. Which means we could mess with the um, we could lower the resolution all day. But if we're still, you know, doing enough with the CPU each frame that uh, that we can't go up to 60 or 120, then we can't go up to 60 or 120. Now, I believe that we actually do, like, on the latest hardware, we do run. We do run at 160. I mean, sorry, 160. That's ridiculous. We do run at 60, um, like, on an Xbox Series X. Like, that's what I'm playing on right now, and it looks really nice. Um, getting up to, uh, to 120 does sound like a lot. And it just, with so many, like... AI zombies running around and other things going on. I'm pretty sure. And again, I am not a technical person. I'm probably wrong about something I'm saying. I really don't know. This isn't. My, I'm, I'm speaking sort of out of turn, outside of my my expertise. But I'm pretty sure that there that there are reasons, technical reasons why we, lowering the uh, lowering the the resolution. Sorry, I'm distracted by zombies while I'm trying to talk. By lowering the resolution, might not necessarily get. Oh, get what you're looking for in terms of uh, in terms of frame rate. Oh, oh, that was a terrible shot. What am I even doing? That also was bad. Holy! Why am I setting myself on fire? Holy crap! Okay, hold on. I was trying to get out. Oh shoot! Man, Chrissy gets out here. Starts thinking that she can do stuff. She absolutely cannot. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So my intent was to throw that fire deeper into the house. And take out the zombies that were far away while I focused on the heart. That is not how that went, though. See, that's what I intended to do. Set the zombies on fire. Focus on the heart. Because focusing on the heart, that's what you do on Valentine's Day, right? Yep, this is a Valentine's Day stream where we're going to be focused on the heart. Okay, let's just run around. Shoving shells into our shotgun. Oh, this has been a disaster. Hi. All 
All right. Oh, man. Cold turkeys on its last legs. Man, this thing's got a lot of hit points. Only got three shots left. Think we can take it out in one more pass? <laughs> okay, let's just gather these guys into a nice little lump of zombies. And... Yes! Unfortunately... I've got a bunch of regular zombies. Yeah, there's been something weird about our uh, our spawning curves for zombies. Which has made it so that uh, these plague heart fights are not as dominated by plague zombies as they traditionally have been. So that means there's a little bit more cleanup to do at the end. Not, not quite as bad as Lethal Zone, where there is no shockwave at the end, but... Yeah. That's almost as much as I can carry. All right. Let's just use this. All right. Anyway, we came here for a reason, which is not just to take out that play card. It was also to grab a vehicle. So let's do that. Oh, we got some got some legacy goals here. So, uh Animes wants to know if we've ever thought of adding uh facial hair to the game. Uh so yeah, originally we did intend to have facial hair in the game, but we just um we ran into <laughs> while we were working on it, we ran into some some issues with just um it's complicated and an artist could explain it better than I could something to do with the way that we um like a lot of our faces are like scanned with photogrammetry so these are like actual people's faces and um which is great it really it gives us really good fidelity but the one thing it's hard to do at that point is then create beards fake beards that look good on real faces um, the, the fidelity of those beards has to be really, really top notch in order not to look really weird and out of place on the faces. And we were not really in a position to, to go really over the top with our beard shaders to get them to look right in the faces. So they just, they always looked out of place and, and, and wrong. That's, that's, I understand. Again, I keep talking at a turn on this <laughs> thing. I'm not a character artist. I'm probably explaining it wrong. That's how I understand it. And so we, have, so we, um, you know, basically... You're always making decisions like that uh, when you're working on a video game is, you know, where are you going to spend your effort? And the amount of effort it was going to take to get beards up to the point where they looked good on our faces was so over the top compared to other things we could do with our time that we decided to do other things with our time. All right, so let's empty this stuff out. Get her back and say, let's fix up this gun. She loves this gun. I love this gun. <laughs> Takes us. I volunteer my beard for scanning. Well, the problem is like like when we were scanning the faces, we needed to not have beards because beards scan really really badly. Because um, they're just so complex, you know that that uh, uh, the the computer that's sort of interpolating and figuring out how to render them makes just tons and tons of mistakes when you got a beard. You also don't scan hair. Um, so yeah. So we had to scan without beards. And then adding beards was also going to be obnoxious. So, I mean, in a setting like this, obviously some men would have beards. Like, so, you know, if we get the opportunity to, to do it right sometime, I'm sure we will. But for now, you know, we basically, we only want to, 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 to attempt to do things that we can, that we know we can do well. We want, you know, we don't want to just throw in something that feels really hacky and wrong just because somebody thought that they wanted it. Um, and so we, we really do, you know, so a lot of the things that people ask for that we don't do, sometimes it's because we know 
with the time and resources that we could afford to spend on that thing, we wouldn't be able to get it looking as good as 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 the person who's asking for it imagines. Um, and so, even though you know we think the thing that they want is legitimate and and everything, uh, sometimes we just we're not going to do it because we want to do we only want to do, tackle the things that in the end are going to actually really make the game better. Hmm. So <laughs> anyway, uh, let's, okay. So we just took that out. Let's see what our community looks like now. Uh, Thom, oh, Thom, he got his uh, computer specialization, electronics. Okay, so that means that now with our workshop repaired, we can make C4. Takes a lot of chemicals and circuitry and parts, but we can also make a lot of it. Okay, so what are we short on? We're short on circuitry. Okay, so we made some. I don't think it's enough to take out five plague hearts. So now we are on a quest to find more circuitry. I think that means driving around and just grabbing electrical transformers everywhere we can. So let's um, make sure we're topped up on consumables. Oh, aren't you a little low on bandages and stuff? Huh. Well, we'll grab that. Grab a snack. Maybe this time we'll take someone with us. Hey, Viva. Want to come with me? I am the boss. Wait, no, I'm not. Chester's the boss. All right, let's pop into this car and start driving around looking for circuitry. Okay, so there's a few different places we can probably find circuitry. Usually um, power station type places, maybe utility sheds, stuff like that. Where was... Yeah, power substation up there. Okay, so let's hit this place up, go to the power substation, and if we see any like stray electrical transformers lying around, we'll, we'll try to hit those up too. Crimson Exodia says that the Willy Peak grenades that I have also work really well. Yeah, I don't have a lot of them, though. And I'm not actually sure. If if something kills something with fire, it might not count as killing it with explosives. Okay, it looks like this one either, either never had anything in it. Or I already already scavenged it. So we won't go, the, go to this one. Where else can we go? Start heading up this way. Usually those electron, uh, electric transformer boxes show up in places that are, are, are a little more settled. Uh, and Meager Valley doesn't have as many of those. Yes! Double zombie smash. Wait, I have missed my turn, but let me just look up here. Nah, I don't see any of those electrical boxes around here. So, yeah, let's head down this way. So, I don't know for sure that this utility warehouse is likely to have electronic bits. It might. Hi! Bang. Bang. Oh, I love the retuned shotguns. Thank you, Zoe, for retuning the shotguns. It's actually fun, as a player of the game, to personally know the people who made certain improvements so that when I enjoy them, I know who to thank. Oh, thanks, Viva. There we go, electronics. I guess it's better than nothing. And a wrench. A wrench is better than nothing. I agree. Yeah, I could definitely use some more materials. Don't want my workshop to break down again. And a thingy. Okay, cool. Oh, 
Oh, Federico says that Molotovs do count as explosives. Interesting. I, I, I had assumed that they would not. So that's pretty cool. I've absolutely forgotten what we talked about. Gutting knives, you can just rot as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> okay, power substation it is. Oh, okay. Doo -doo -doo. And thank you, Dan Mode, for the fact that I can drive through that. Oh, looks like Chrissy's getting tired, so uh, this will be her last run before we give her a break. So much zombies. My intent was to drive over the zombies in reverse and could not figure out <laughs> how to do that correctly. <laughs> yeah, rip that head off, Christy. <laughs> Doesn't she look like she would have just been like the president of the homeowners association back before the apocalypse? Oh, what? Oh, did I already gank this place? Oh, man. Utility warehouse probably does not have the stuff I want in it. Nope. Ah, oh, garbage. Absolute garbage. Okay. Well, if at first you don't succeed, find someplace else. All right, so I haven't really scanned this area. But maybe we should actually head towards a more, like, urban center type area, like... Across, like across the river over here. We'll get off. See if we can find any of those like electrical boxes lying around. I should be careful of plague zombies around here. Oh, see you later, Crimson Exodia. Thanks for joining us. Scott Landon says, would love a Trumbull Valley map in the normal game. So many hours in that map spent in the first game. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea. That actually is one of the uh, one of the top items on the wish list. Um, it does take a very long time for us to make a map. Even a map that you would look at and think it's mostly done, it's still a big job. Um, the Trumbull Valley map was made specifically for Heartland, and there's a lot of ways in which... Um, Making it work for the core game would be really, really time-consuming. We would need to, uh, for instance, provide an entire new uh, range of bases. We would need to redo all of the loot. We would need to probably include some kind of explanation for like what happened in the story. Does it take place before Heartland? After Heartland? You know, uh, and whatever we do, there probably be really big changes to the map because Heartland, it's got a lot of stuff going on that really affects the map. Um, so there's, there's a lot of considerations we'd have to make if we were to do such a job. And so I think that th there's some people who every time we post an update of any kind, they're like, why did you do this and not make a Trumbull Valley map? And we're like, hold on a second. Making, if we are making a Trumbull Valley map, it's going to take us a long, long time to do it. So chill. <laughs> like, wait a second. I think the last time we made a new map for the game, it took us between six and nine months. And uh, if you recall, we did our revision to Drucker County last fall. So we're not yet at the point where we should have finished another map. If we had started another map project right after Drucker County, we would not be done with it yet. So there you go. T take whatever conclusions about that you want. This is not the time to start worrying that we're not going to make a uh, make a new map for the game. 
Nope. So, okay. So I came to find this. This is what I'm here for. There's nothing in it. I might be about to lose hope that we're going to find a ton of electronics lying around. But, but not yet. I have not yet lost hope. Thing is, like, so the farming supply store, I think that it's got seeds. I don't think it has electronics. The vacant office? I'm actually not sure. It's got something in there. Let's go try this office. Because I don't think it would be ethanol. So it's got the icon on there that says it's got special crafting stuff in it. Um, I don't think it would be ethanol. I don't think it would be chemicals. Not if it's an office. I think an office is more likely to have electronics. So let's let's see if that's true. Okay, Viva, watch my back. Gardening textbook, not too bad. Computers textbook. And seeds, really? Seeds is what we're finding in here? Viva, you got that, right? You just, everything's okay? Wow. Okay, so many textbooks. Oh, yeah, perfectly safe. <laughs> Viva's not doing that well, but yeah, it's perfectly safe. Everything's fine. All right, so let's put some of these textbooks away. Doing okay, Viv? Okay. Are coming now. It's all right. It'll be fine. Ooh, Wandering Trader. Where is the Wandering Trader? Down there. Okay, you know what? That's a good use of our time. Let's go to at least an outpost. Oh, yeah, we got a beds outpost right there. So let's go to an outpost. Let's swap out some of our gear and go to the Wandering Trader. They might sell electronics, I think. Kind of a long shot, probably. Oh, I just totally missed my turn. That's what I do. I miss turns in real life and in the game. That's my that's my style. It's my driving style. Oh, good, a horde. Um, all right, Viv, how do you want to deal with this? Maybe, maybe we go cold turkey. My sniper shotgun. Oh, sorry, I thought I was closer to these guys than I was because I was sniping. Yes. Oh, gosh. You got that? All right, cool. The cold turkey is, like, one of the best weapons in the game. <laughs> I love this thing. Uh, Tokamak asks, have you played Nova Drift by any chance? No, I don't think I even recognize that name. What, what kind of game is that? Okay, let's drop off the stuffs we don't need. Let's use that to be wasteful. And, yeah, we probably don't need to carry this many shells around. And let's grab any of our... Okay, you know what we don't need? A million signal antennas. Um, but, I mean, I could put these in people's inventories for future communities, so... Maybe I'll keep those. Oh, I've got so many luxuries. I wish I had room for that. Hey, Viv. How about we just switch? Oh my gosh, that camera move. What the crap? Okay, anyway. Unfortunately, the camera move doesn't happen every time. So it's really hard to uh, reproduce it and fix it. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to go trade. Where's my car? My car's up here. Oh, Tokamak says that Nova Drift is a... It's an asteroids-like shmup inspired by Path of Exile. So, I definitely like top-down shooters. The shmup style, though, where it's all about avoiding a million uh, bullets? 
doesn't appeal to me that much just because I'm bad at it. <laughs> so that sounds like a cool idea, especially the, the um, inspired by Path of Exile bit. Um, maybe I'll try it out, but I'm not... I, uh, I don't have high hopes that I'll be able to get super into it because of my inability to be good at shmups. <laughs> Warbucks just uh, suggested that we could do a trait that makes us... We, we've got some traits that make characters good at making coffee. We don't have any traits to make them bad at making coffee. And Warbucks suggested that might actually be kind of a fun one. Uh, though, I gotta say, people complain enough about um, our characters being annoying and uh, causing fights and things like that, that probably adding a new trait like that would not be very well received by the audience. Hey there, Annabelle. Let's trade, okay? Let's trade, okay? Let's trade that and that and that and that and that and the pesticides and the generator. And hold on. Let you let's let's have you talk to my friend here too. My friend's got some things. Hey there, Annabelle. You got something for me? Sure. Oh, you can't even afford to buy some of this stuff. Too rich for your blood, huh? Okay, well, what do you have to offer us? Bunch of stuff I don't need. Hmm. Food for a morale boost. Now, that's attractive, except that I don't have a kitchen. And I don't think I have space for a kitchen. Hold on. Let's evaluate. Oh, you know what? Okay, I've got two more beds than I need right now. Maybe I could turn some of these beds into a kitchen. Outdoor beds hurts morale. So what I would just need is another beds outpost. Yeah, okay, okay. We've got a plan. We've got a plan. Okay, so... Let's grab the slow cooker. No room. no room. Right, of course. Let's sell some crap. Grab the slow cooker. Now that's heavy. Sell more crap. Whoa, she had the exact, the exact amount of influence. That was crazy. Wow, I love that stuff. I love when I'm bouncing my checkbook and I get stuff like that happens. Um, okay. How, how are we doing on food? 27. If we're about to start burning food on, um, stuff, then maybe I should actually, let, let, let's grab one rucksack of food while we're here. And that's it. And Viv, we'll put that in here. Let's go... I guess we'll head towards home. Actually, no, no. What we need is to figure out where do we want to put our new beds outpost. You know what? Oh, what's going on? Oh, hello. Okay, while he's on the ground, is there a beds place that we can take up this way? Yes. Oh, shady looking house or greenhouse? Let's go for the cute greenhouse. Oh, it's getting me. Oh, gosh. Okay. That didn't go very well. Uh, all right. Let's go claim a beds outpost up there so that we can get rid of our beds facility at the base. And then replace that beds facility with a kitchen where we can use a slow cooker to make people happy. Uh, I love it when a game reflects reality, like a slow cooker make people happy. Oh my gosh, what is going on right now? Uh, 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 there we go. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go. Yes, 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 we have made it through without using the stuck command. Okay, here we go. Scott Lannon asks, is it possible to add an ammo trader? Uh, so so I think that is one of the specialties that a wandering trader can have. Wandering traders tend to have specialties. Um, so that one had a food specialty. Like she sold food rucksacks and food related facility mods and stuff like that. And you could, I think there is an ammo one. I'm pretty sure there has to be. Um, you just can't tell who they are <laughs> from, uh... you know what? That's actually, you know what? I'm going to make a note about that. 
identify traders from the map. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make a note about that because yeah, it probably would help if you knew in advance what kinds of stuff a wandering trader. Oh no, the gutting knives are mad at me. Oh no, whatever will I do with the gutting knives mad at me? Anyway, um, yeah, that, that's a good point. Like, if you knew that a given wandering trader was for ammo and you needed ammo, you would just run right out there immediately. But if you're not sure what they're selling, it might actually just sort of remove your motivation. Okay, so I was going to go the other way, but I'm such a great shot. Hey, dumb zombie. All right. Oh, while we're here, might as well search. Not exactly what I wanted, but it'll do. Oh, I wanted that. You can just shut your mouth with your complaints. Oh, this again. Fabulous. Viva, do you do you like anything? Why don't you try appreciating the small things in life? Like shooting a zombie in the head and having its head just explode all over you. All right, Christy, you done? You done over there? This flooded factory is like one of my favorite places on this map. I mean, the, the factory's not for anything. Like, there's not much I can do with it. I just like it. It's pretty. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so the thing is, I, I, I'm i betting that I would have to, in order to give each of the um, traders like their own name, identifying um, what they had to sell, I think that would actually require me to like completely redo that mission. Because it would mean spawning several different enclaves instead of one enclave with a variety of different um, uh, things to sell. So it could easily be that what I need to do is maybe maybe the thing I should I need to edit is the enclave description, because like any time I like if I wanted to sit down and just redo a mission, there would be a lot of risk of me breaking it and making it worse. Uh, and so I want to avoid doing that. But if it's as simple as just changing the enclave description so when you look closely at them, you can tell that... I, I need to keep this thing off my back. Um, when you look closely at them, you can tell. Like in the in the little flyout. Like when, you're, like when you look over here, it says, you know, the boon trader are on the fence about us. We better tread lightly around them. Um, I don't know why the boon trader <laughs> is in that position, but whatever. Um... The point is, that little message there, we can change that whenever we want to in mission scripting. So maybe what I want to do is have that report what uh, what a trader has to sell. I'll, I'll look into it, though. I'll, I'll try to figure out what, what my options are. I haven't actually... I didn't make those missions, so I don't actually know um, how they work under the hood. It could be that this would be, that this would be a really easy change. Uh, and then we could just change their names and that would be it. But you know, when you're working on a game that is live, you're always looking for the way to make a change that risks the least um, harm <laughs> to the game. I thought I heard a zombie knocking. Uh -oh, oh, what's heading this way? Oh, just a normal zombie? I thought, for a second, I thought it was like a freak or something. Okay. Are you dead? Cool. Another one! Get a life, zombies. All right. So we'll send the slow cooker home. Send a bunch of this stuff home. Let's grab things out of the car too. Nice work, Christy. 
Ugh, it drives me crazy how the cursor in the uh, trunk moves every time you mo- you remove something from it. Just f- does not feel like that's how that should work. Because <laughs> your normal inventory doesn't do that. You're allowed to highlight empty spots in your normal inventory. Why would you not be allowed to highlight an empty spot in your vehicle inventory? It makes no sense. It's on a list of things that I think we should change. And these my 45 cal rounds? Yes. Okay. Okay, so now that we've sent that stuff home and we claimed this place, now we can bulldoze this facility and replace it with a kitchen. And we can put that back. Yeah, and then we can install the slow cooker, and then we can really start messing with our... Uh, Messing with our uh, morale. So we've got some morale bonuses here. Plus 10 morale, 15 morale. Okay, yeah, I wonder. I wonder if we have enough now, if we do everything at once, to get up to 100 morale. We're only at 49, so it would take a lot. Got a lot of people, though. Except Viva. Viva, you're causing problems. Okay, you know what? If we, if it turns out we can get within three, but we can't get up to 100, Viva might have to go. Now, exiling Viva would make people sad for a little while, but eventually they get over it. And, and uh, yeah, Viva, you need to become a better person. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Christy, are you carrying anything you, that you don't need? No, you're, you're, you're pretty good. All right, so I still did not get as many electronics as I wanted to. But, I mean, actually, I could just check right now. I can make more C4 once. Pretty sure that was it, though. Yeah, so that's going to give us, what, 12 C4? So if we're careful... And we do some damage, if we, like... If we butter up the uh, plague hearts before we set off the C4, get him down a couple of tiers. You can probably pull it off, but these two are not going to go after these plague hearts. They need to go home and get Leroy Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins is our plague heart guy. For now, though. We've been playing for a little while, so I think this session is probably about over. We're really making progress, though, towards our long-term goal of getting our morale all the way up and then getting the Sheriff Legacy. This Ranger SUV does not have a ton of gas in it. I think I can make it home. Maybe. I don't know. Watching that distance tick down. It's not as the crow flies, though. Okay, so right turn I want to make. Oh, wait. That's the Wandering Trader. That's not even my... That's not my base. Oh, it's just sheer chance that it didn't take me in the opposite direction of where I needed to go. That's my base. And luckily, my base is much closer. So, yeah, we're, we're going to make it. We're going to be real short on gas when we get there, but we're going to make it. Hello, zombies. So one of the challenges of making these bases is the fact that if you make them too big, they just don't make any sense. So we had a lot of great ideas for bases that included a baseball field here and a uh, drive-in theater. But once we actually started building them, it turns out those two things are very, very large in real life. They take up a lot of space. And you can't just build one thoughtlessly <laughs> and have it turn out okay. All right, so how are we doing with that? Okay, that kitchen is almost ready to go. And we've got enough kitchen experts here that we can probably upgrade it again, which is nice. Uh, wait, oh, did I empty out the trunk yet? I don't think I did, because I think we're going to need materials to upgrade that kitchen. I did not. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, so once that kitchen is done... Dude, Chester, just chill out, okay? We're, we're working on the plague heart situation. Hmm. It's catching up with the chat here a little bit. Oh, Sada Hotpot says, I love that you can hear when you run out of fuel. Yeah, so our audio team has put a ton of work into making our cars feel and and feel right in the way that they sound you know it's like you your memories of how cars actually work it's really really strong like you don't really under you don't usually think about how familiar you how familiar you are with the way a car sounds but cars sound a very specific way as you're driving and doing different things and if it if a game gets it wrong you can kind of feel it at a gut level and so they had to put a lot of work into making cars actually work right because it's not just as, as simple as like oh car is running play car running sound it's like as you're accelerating braking skidding doing all this like it's got to sound a certain way and uh, and it's complicated to figure out how you know how those sounds should all should all play when they should play under exactly what circumstances. So it's it's a lot of work and and, and a lot of expertise went into it. Scott Landon says, "I really appreciate that Under the Labs listens to the fans and explains clearly why something can or cannot be done. Uh, we try, you know. It's like a lot of the time, you know, there's reasons why developers will often not." talk very much about uh their their ongoing long-term plans and it's because we we as experienced game developers we know how easily things can go wrong something that we think is a good idea that will work when we get into implementing it we find out that it is not a good idea and it will not work and so we hate sort of saying oh yes we're going to make this change to the game and then we have to back out of it because we realize there's a lot of reasons not to do it um and so usually people stay pretty tight-lipped about the stuff that they're working on um and try not to explain things because they could end up... I mean, here, I feel like I've taken a lot of risks on this particular stream trying to explain things that are outside of my expertise that if one of my colleagues watches this stream, they might be like, you're idiot. <laughs> you're describing it all completely wrong. And, uh, you know, I mean, people expect designers not to know anything. Uh, so maybe it's just par for the course. But... Uh... Anyway, <laughs> the point is, there's a lot of motivations why somebody might not want to just say whatever's in their head and just, and just you know, communicate whatever, uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever they think about the game they're working on. There's a, there's a lot of players out there who like to punish you for getting something even slightly wrong, who, who get just a huge charge out of saying, ha ha, they said this, but then this happened, they're liars, and then put us on some, you know, the wrong side of some moral calculus and make us the villains in their story, and... We don't enjoy that. <laughs> you know, we don't want that to happen. So usually that leads developers to stay very, very tight-lipped about things. Um, we try. So, and again, we probably could communicate a lot more about what we're working on. In fact, this year, we're hoping we can do, start doing a little bit better about communicating our long-term plans. Not right now, but we have some ideas in place about what we could do. But it feels risky. You know, we think about, you know, trying to publish things like a, like a, like a future roadmap or talk about features that are still in progress. Like... That's terrifying because if we get something wrong, it'll just sort of sit with us forever. Um, so, but at the same time, we also really like the idea of being open with our community. We like the idea of talking things through and letting you guys in on our thought processes. And so we, so we keep trying to push the boundaries of what we're comfortable with, trying to, you know, to make stuff like that happen. But it's, uh, it is, it is intimidating. So I'm glad that you appreciate it. Uh, it can definitely sometimes be a little scary for for us. All right, so since I've got this kitchen in progress already, I feel like. Oh, hey, Christy, you 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 can take a break. All right, so what have I got? I've got a nice little twenty-two pistol. I could probably. Do I have any mods? Can I craft a mod? Let's craft a mod. Oh, wait, no. We don't have an engineer yet. We do have a mechanic, though, don't we? Okay, me. I'm a mechanic. Ah! But I'm not an engineer yet. I want to be an engineer. Okay, so first off, Christy gets to specialize. She's tired. She doesn't want to be tired anymore, so discipline. Sure. And... Oh, assault is garbage. <laughs> Another thing on my list, the assault skill is garbage. We, <laughs> we need to make it better. Um, okay, so let's find some other things that will imp improve the mechanic skill. Like, wh what will improve the mechanic skill? Let's see here. Like, for instance, 
We're probably short on toolkits, right? Let's make a toolkit. Will all of these improve the mechanics? Well, they all will, yeah. I don't want to just craft a bunch of box mines, though. Huh. I mean, you can never have too many toolkits, right? I mean, our cars are actually in pretty poor shape, so let's craft a few of these. Now, how much mechanic skill did that gain me? Oh, a little bit. A little bit. Let's uh, maybe make one more of those. This is just costing me parts, right? I got plenty of parts. How was that? Jay, how you looking? <gasps> oh my gosh! His mechanic skill. He can be an engineer now. And now that he's an engineer, we can build weapon mods. Okay, so he has actually... So he's got this little tiny pistol. So actually, I kind of want to give him a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay, so now this little tiny 22 target pistol will do more damage to larger things. I think it might cause more knockback too. I'm not sure. Oh, let's, while we got those toolkits, let's use them. I'm just killing time until the kitchen's done. Okay, I've lost track of the chat. So while I'm repairing this vehicle, we'll read the chat a little bit. <laughs> okay, so the tank points out that as far as getting uh, car audio right, the tank says, there's car companies today that have to do the same thing. No joke. Some engines for the high-end sports and luxury car companies fake the engine noise because the engines are so quiet from all the new tech and people just don't feel like they're driving a car. I had heard about that. That is hilarious that people do that. Oh, actually, you know what? I've had this freaking Miragra forever. And it's been in the worst shape. And I just keep limping it around from base to base. There we go. Much nicer. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Santa Hotpot says, leave the devs alone. Uh, when it comes to people giving us crap whenever we get something even slightly wrong. Uh, the tank says, I know so many people complained about Grounded because YouTubers scraped images of the bees and they finally just added them, which never bothered me because Obsidian always makes it clear they're adding uh, what they're adding each new update. But people get hyped on the clickbait videos, uh, but now they do a weekly stream like you guys. Yeah, so, oh, and, see, and they published a wish list to talk about the stuff they want to add. Yeah, and so I feel like you know, they, they're in early access. They're doing kind of a public early access thing, which is actually the perfect time to be really open about your ongoing plans. Um, because we didn't do an early access thing, you know, our game was, you know, released to the public whenever it was done, uh, and nobody got to see it in advance. We kind of started in a different zone where, you know, we had it's kind of a normal marketing push and normal sort of your typical classic approach to, um, to developing and, and, and selling a game. And so it started us in a different zone. And so I think now that we're in this post-release period where we are developing the game in an ongoing way, the same way that Grounded is in Early Access, I feel like it is appropriate for us to try to transition to to a mode where we are more open about our plans. Um, so, yeah. So, I, again, transitioning, like, all of your plans to work a different way, it, it's it's complicated in a way that it's hard to explain. It's like there's a natural feeling of reticence about changing something that's already kind of been working for you. And so, um, you know, so I hope you'll have patience with us. <laughs> we do want to be more, uh, we do want to be more open about this stuff and more, you know, communicative about this stuff. And so we just have to figure out sort of the right way to do it to make us not feel like we're about to sign on for a bunch of, of oncoming disasters. Connor Pribble points something out that I think is pretty valuable here. He says, uh, I imagine that State of K2 is a hard game to update when listening to the community because everyone wants extremely different things. Yeah, so this game, the, something I say sometimes to, to, the, to the team here is that, you know, when people hear about our game, they imagine a perfect zombie survival fantasy that matches all of their fondest dreams about what living in the zombie apocalypse in a video game would be like. And that perfect game does not exist and it cannot exist. Um, and so people always come to our game with these sort of these very high hopes 
And no matter what, the game is going to fall short of what people hope for. And that generates all this like excitement around, like, they're still developing the game. Here's what the game needs to add in order to get better, in order to be like the perfect game in my head. The problem is, that perfect game is different for every player, right? And so it's really, really hard for us to stay on top of all of the different... Like, like we couldn't possibly... Number one, you can't make a perfect game. And number two, you definitely can't make a perfect game for each individual audience member who each want a different thing. And so we're always going to be kind of on our, on our, you know, back foot or whatever. It's like, like, you know, kind of uh, a little bit behind the curve uh, when it comes to sort of providing what players want in this game, because they want, I mean, this game has got huge ambitions. It's trying to simulate a very big thing that, that, that has a very powerful emotional resonance in people's minds. And, trying to do that means you'll always feel like you're falling short and so each of us we also have our perfect version of the game in our heads we all feel like we're falling short all the time but it's something we have to just kind of get comfortable with because we're never going to get to the point where the game is perfect we're never going to get to the point where it makes everyone happy all the time with what with what the game is and, and no individual member of the team me included none of us are ever going to feel like the game is the perfect thing that we wanted to make we're, this game is always going to be some degree of compromise with a lot of different uh, trade-offs and a lot of different hopes and a lot of different expectations. And and so the only thing we can do is slowly whittle away the gap between our game and the perfect game. You know, because I think we, we can never reach the destination. It's like Xeno's Paradox or something like that. We can never quite get there, but we can get closer. And our goal is for each update to get us closer to that perfect game than, uh, you know, th than we are right now. We're so close with this freaking kitchen. Six, five, four, three, two, one, kitchen! All right, and now we add the slow cooker. All right, so that's ready to go. So, oh, wait, oh, wow, our morale took a big hit. What happened? Oh, maybe something that we had, maybe something just wore off. That's entirely possible. Like maybe, yeah, we need to muck out the latrine again. Maybe we need to play some board games again, which means we can't do these other ones. Did I just hear people? Did I hear? Is there an audio cue for playing board games where I hear a little bit of a yell in the background, like a happy yell? Did I hear that? Right? I'm not sure now. Oh, weird. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Just trying to catch up again. <laughs> Zombie Brave Knight says, Nothing is broken, the game is perfect. Uh, <laughs> it's very kind of you, Zombie Brave Knight. That's about the least convincing thing anyone has ever said about State of Decay 2. So, Sata Hot Pot says uh, that uh, no matter what, I'll always love you guys. Undead Labs made the best zombie game I've ever played, even if it's not perfect. Thank you. We appreciate that. That's the thing we hope for is that, you know, even though this game will never be perfect and, and is not perfect now, um, it... Uh I like to hope that there are at least there at least is an audience out there for whom we've gotten closer than anyone else. Uh, you know, and again, people want different things or different zombie games. Some people just want the horror of a zombie game. Some people just want the overwhelming hordes and the combat and the crazy over the top, uh, you know, situations, uh, action situations of a zombie apocalypse. And we're not, we're not the top of the heap on either of those. Um, but I think people who want sort of this, like, ran like the sort of the, the, the random characters, the community simulation, the community management, uh, you know, sort of the, the big open world where you can go inside every single house and search for things. There's something about that, type of experience that sort of that uh community survival um experience that i think we've sort of hit this weird interesting middle ground where we've got enough of the simulation enough of the you know interesting weird characters enough of the you know like all these other these weird in, uh ingredients that sort of come together in this recipe to make this weird thing that's different from everything else but for some people is dead center what they're looking for and I think we can get better and better at being that. Again, we're not even the perfect version of that, but I think we can get better and better at being that weird little magical compromise between a lot of different things. Uh, the, you know, there there are folks who want that, and uh, who want that exact thing that we're that we're trying to provide. And so I think we can get better and better and better at being that exact thing. And for people out there like you, 
for whom that's what you're looking for, uh, it'll be it'll be perfect. So uh, not perfect, but it'll be it'll be enough what you're looking for that you'll stick around with us and we can keep making it better. That's my goal, really, is not to make the perfect game and boom, we've made the perfect zombie game. It's to find an audience who want who's interested in the stuff we're interested in, who wants what we want out of this experience, and find that audience and then get them on board. Get them in here playing the game, and then keep making that game better for that audience over time. And I think that's I think that's an achievable goal, right? Like you know, making the perfect game not an achievable goal. Uh, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. But trying to make a particular game for a particular audience that entertains them in a way that nothing else does, and then doing a particularly good job of it, spending the time to try to get closer and closer to what they're looking for, that feels worthwhile. So notice, I was able to knock that guy down with a 22. That's because of the break that I installed. And similarly, this gun would be garbage against a juggernaut without the break. In fact, it is still not as good as it could be. But How many did we lose? Oh wait, oh hold on. And that's my last because the juggernaut didn't make it into base? He doesn't count? The siege is over, but we still got this juggernaut? Huh. Well, welcome. All right, yeah, so even with the break, I think this 22 is not really doing it. Maybe everybody else could help? Sheesh. Thank you. Some of these folks have proper guns. <laughs> oh, did not time that right. They're all shooting him in the head now. There we go. Oh, ganked him again. I could never finish that move. All right. Well, let's drop these off. So I just didn't... The reason I stuck around that, that time was just I didn't want to uh, start the next session with a siege like I did this time. All right, so... Our base is looking pretty good. Yeah, let's use the uh, the slow cooker. Let's fire up a round of drinks. Yeah, they, yeah, people do totally cheer when you do that. That's awesome. I don't think we've got anything else that grants morale. Uh, I don't have anything valuable to put in there. Do, 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 do. Oh, recent kill of a feral. That's helping too. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so I feel like we're still short a few things. I think I might need to start if I want to get up to 100, am I going to have to start like like say for instance getting rid of Viva and then replacing her with somebody who's likely to have a um a hero bonus that adds morale? I might need to get a plumber in here. Oh my gosh, what? This is what I'm missing. I need a plumber. Okay, well, that's my next goal. I got to recruit myself a plumber. Do I have utilities textbook? I don't. Okay, so I'm going to need a utilities textbook or a plumber. Oh, man. Now, now I'm thinking that uh, ignoring the gutting knives all those times uh, was not a good plan. After all, maybe they had a plumber. All right, the plumber. That's gonna be my. Th that's gonna be the thing that pushes me over the edge. I think. Oh, everyone's reminding me to kill that juggernaut with a rifle. Uh, I guess that's a good idea. Too bad it's too late. <laughs> I mean, I already had this guy. He's got a pistol. I, I wasn't gonna go with the juggernaut running around right in here. I wasn't gonna go rummaging around in here for a. Uh, for a rifle. I think if I think if one of my community members had killed him with a rifle, I'm not sure if that would have counted or not. I think if I had been playing in multiplayer and a multiplayer partner had killed him with a rifle, that would have counted for me. But I don't 
I don't know if, I don't think my community members count. Anyway, anyway, we've been playing this for a long time. It's time for us to, uh, time for us to cut it out. Get out of here. Thanks for hanging out with me. This was a lot of fun. Uh, uh, if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel. Um, you can watch me sort of fumble around trying to talk about State of Decay 2 and how it works under the scenes. Uh, even when I don't even know the answer. Also, there's other videos.